that are. All right. Well, let's start with this pit. So this is Chris. Hello. Hey, some people on stream know who you are. <laughs> hey guys. All right. So this is actually <laughs> one of the uh, designer pits. I guess they're all called. But uh, this is where I sit. <laughs> Let me go to my seat first. Um, and this is actually Chris Roberts. Hello. Say hi to uh, all the H1Z1 viewers. Oh, we need viewers. a mic for him. We need a mic to walk around with this. Oh, yeah, so we going to pick it up all right? Cool. OK, he's got, a, he's got it. Uh, what do you work on? Uh, vehicles. Uh, vehicles. Yeah. Right now, we've got the off-roader in the game. Uh, it's really exciting. A lot of people seem to be having a good time running over zombies. Can you show us like something cool? Sure. I know this is like tech, tech stuff. I know this is like totally last second, second but uh, no problem. Uh, you see, he's, he's got, got the uh, uh, matrix, matrix set up with all his monitors, monitors and, and uh, he when, actually plays right now with it spread across. Look at all that! All, yeah, he plays the game with it all spread. I recommend monitors. Nvidia Surround. It's excellent. I mean, <laughs> not, not to give a plug out to any specific technology solution, but having three monitors and having it wrap around is an awesome uh, sort of immersion kind of thing. Um, yeah, give me a second to start my. Yeah, take your time. Who's yeah. this guy next to you while, yeah, hey. uh, while he's getting ready? What's your name? Hi guys, I am Hunter Spiegel. I am a business intelligence engineer on the H1Z1 team. But um, explain what the, what does that mean to the viewers out there? What is business intelligence? Um, I guess the best way to describe it is kind of optimizing monetization in game, um, using data and analytics and stuff like that. You find lots of stats that we need. Like a, a good example would be like from Plant Side Two. We needed to know, you know, how many people are dying from bullets at 150 meters sure. and what weapons are they using yeah uh, you know stuff like that a, a lot of information like that a lot of the information the hunters gonna be coming up with will help um, different parts of the team but me in particular and a couple of the guys we work in on combat because we need to know those things how long does it take someone to travel a certain distance and do we need to make that better how do we solve that issue um, what are our logout times how are you guys enjoying this because as much as we look at reddit and everything else we want to make sure we have like actual tangible in-game statistics to be able to continue to build our game around yeah, for yeah. Sure, sure. So it's exciting. So basically, uh, since the game's not out yet, you just sit around and play video games all day. Uh, some of the time. <laughs> I do I participate in every play test, which is really just fun. Kidding. I'm just um, kidding. And I kind of help out with a lot of like QA and bug tracking stuff right now, since there's not a lot of you know live in-game data to work with. Yeah, um, for sure. So I kind of just do whatever whatever I'm asked of, check all trades, I guess. Yeah. That's Sweet. actually a lot of the team, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as you go around a little bit, you'll notice a little bit of a trend. Uh, some people do favor to work on certain types of things, but we really do all try to pitch in on different sides of, uh, of the equation here for this game. But it uh, looks like, like Chris getting, getting some of them things launched up here. So he's, he's using an internal launcher that we have to use to launch the game, and it kind of has all of our tools that we use to build the game, as well as the tool to launch the game. It's actually really nice. Uh, yeah. It makes it so you don't have to go through a bunch of batch files and launch your own servers and do all this other stuff. Um, it's all just right in the tool. And shout out Steve George. Yeah, shout My out homie. Steve George, producer, <laughs> H1Z1. We'll go see him later. Yeah. Very cool. We can come back, Chris. Yeah, we can come back, Chris. We'll, we'll see in just a second if it runs. If it doesn't run, then come back. Th no, then you okay. broke it? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> if it doesn't run something on your local He's machine, like, if it doesn't it's run, uh, I get to go home for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> what is? What are you dealing with over here on the fancy wireframe side? Um, so this is what we call the dynamic system tool. Um, it's one of the primary interfaces that I have to the components which make up the dynamic system with the vehicles. Um, what we see here is the actual collision mesh uh, that the physics is considering when the vehicle's driving around. Um, the other pane that the tool supports um, is basically all the subcomponents for the engine, the wheels, the tires, the suspension, um, the dynamic system as a whole, sort of the sum of all the pieces where they come together. Um, there's a lot of parameters. Um, you can basically <laughs> set like every single physics object that a car can do, right? Like you can like set yeah, spring rates, tires, anything. shocks. Yeah. There's all the sort of nuts and bolts, um, weights and measures, things that you'd expect um, as far as each piece that moves has a mass, a moment of inertia, um, you know, how it's connected as far as the suspension, the spring rates, the dampeners, uh, the shocks and that sort of thing. Um, this, it, was this how we made our vehicles on Plan Set 2? It's fundamentally the same tool set and the bulk of the code is the same. Um, and the idea is that it's a fairly generic open um, vehicle simulation. Uh, so we can do, like in Planet Side, tanks with 16 wheels or you know the off-road. Well, don't say that. Now they're going to go over to Planet Side <laughs> Dev Team and be like, they said we could have tanks with 16 wheels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the Vanguard has 16 wheels. Oh. 
There you go. <laughs> well, it's just a, you know, on a tread. It's done. Right. Ship it. Um, Ship it. <laughs> so, um, you know, you set up all the physics parameters as far as what you want it to do is in the simulation. Um, and then there's another layer of how the controller inputs considered, um, other forces that are applied to make it behave the way people expect. Um, you know, so it, when, when everything's working well, um, you have a low level that's actually fairly accurately simulated as far as the physics, and then you have gameplay uh, layers on top of that that make it more approachable and stuff so that it behaves the way people expect and uh, hope that it will in the game. Um, but it looks like my build's not starting up. Okay. You broke it, man. We, 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 all, we understand. <laughs> no issue. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go run around a little bit. This is Be very quiet. Smed's on this. Alright. Hey, hey, Smed. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, hey, guys. So this is uh, John Smedley, if you guys didn't know before. Uh, he is the lead on this project and CEO of Sony Online Entertainment. Uh, he's got the biggest office, of course, with a big, nice We all laughed when he saw the floor plan that it was actually the shape and size of Texas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretty nice. Uh, so what do you do on this team again? Uh, Mostly I play zombie games and, uh, you know, just have a lot of fun. Uh, this is my office. I have a lot of team meetings in here. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, Whatever, it's an office. Very exciting. <laughs> For those of you that uh, uh, want to get into game development, you know, it's all about an office. Uh, yeah, it's just an office. <laughs> it's really, really exciting. There you go. Sorry. Right. Smed's office. Guys, you heard it here first. President of Sony Online Entertainment. Game development is about offices. There you go. All right. So then why don't I have an office? You don't have an office. <laughs> you have a second you're in the middle of something. Hold on. We're on introducing people, Kriegs. Hi. So this is da, 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 da. Josh Kriegshauser. And what do you, you are? Technical architect on H1Z1. Yeah. Twitter handle is Autenel. A U T E N I L. This guy right Autenel. here. No. No. Yes. This no. guy right here. For the weird tweets you see throughout the day, I have a bad Has habit. Has never been proven. <laughs> <laughs> I need to put up the security camera, but he has been tweeting from my account. It has been his fault. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. All right, allegedly, it's him. Um, so what, uh, what, yeah. what are you working on? What, right what? now, I'm trying to wrangle various people to do various things. So we're working on some UI performance issues right now. Um, we have a, a small, tiny little, baby little hiccup in the, in the UI. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, we're, we're trying to resolve that. <laughs> I love the smile that comes with that. I mean, there's no reason to say baby little. Right now, it's a little bit of an issue, and it's something we definitely want to dive into. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, all of these things, like from the beginning, sure. right? We are monitoring performance, and yeah. pretty much every play test, somebody is doing profiling, and we are making sure that this game is going to perform well. Yeah. We're we're uh, using our multi-threaded renderer, and we're very cognizant of running well on low-end hardware as well as performing very well on on the upper. Sweet. I love it. Good stuff. I love to hear that stuff. Uh, this is where Lenny sits. You saw him earlier oh, in yeah. the dev meeting. Uh, he's probably working on the barricade stuff right now. No joke. We weren't lying about that. They have to work on that all day. Uh, this is James, actually. He's out James today. He's out today. He's, uh, he's in Iceland. He's in Iceland. He went to because a games. He went to a okay. convention. He did. Uh, we got real game fans here. No, no joke. Yeah. Uh, this is where I sit. We don't have care Just about ignore that. Either. We don't care. All right. Let's, uh, let's meet some of the artists and animators. I don't know. Warning, there's a camera nearby. Yeah. I need you guys to calm down. This actually looks really cool. Come on Can we in. actually come in? Yeah. yeah. Is this OK? Yeah. All right. Good morning, though. This is Survivor Zone. Oh, this is the employee motivation device that we <laughs> talked right. about earlier. Hey guys, welcome. Check that out. I won't get too close to the winds. Look at that. That's <laughs> sweet. So this is what happens when you're late to work. Yes. Um, <laughs> three, you, three times in the head. Okay. If you don't send in a PTO message, you send that in too late, this is what happens after noon. This one still scares me. I, get a is, shot. I don't know if I, I want to be right. in this office anymore. This do you know, what, this, do you know what these things are? Uh, no, no. These go into the ceiling and they hang, they hang uh, <laughs> screws. Tiles. <laughs> Isn't that great? I'm going to turn it on. Yeah, like so let's great. introduce you guys. This is... This is uh, yeah. Sean Johnston. All right. And I'm one of the senior animators on? here. Awesome. What are you working on right now? I am working on some first-person melee animations. Kind of like, do you dream of first-person arms now? Yes. Yes. All the time. Just in your do you do you walk and then in your peripherals like have your hands and your No, we do run like this down the hallway to see you know if you can see on the screen. Yeah. We do do that, so yeah, let's nice. see if it looks funny or not. Like and we also have I'm another Sean, Sean D. Priest. I'm a technical artist here. I uh, hook up all of our animations into our state machine, which is Natural Motion's Morpheme. Oh, he's got the client up. 
Just get it. Oh, that's right. So wait, are these screens? Oh, that's actually a pun. Okay. What do you? What do you? What, what animation are you working on? What these are, are some of the punches we have going in game from uh, Sean Johnson, who was telling me about the uh, punches he was doing. Oh yeah, we, we talked about. I talked about on Twitter that we're going to be crowning the heavyweight uh, world champ. Uh, of the dev team, but we never got around to actually doing it. Nice. So you have the top guy looking at what it mm -hmm. looks like in third person, and then you have the first person down at the bottom. That's right. Right, so he's running two clients. Nice. Yeah. So we're trying to get the sequence working correctly. We got uh, rights, left. Are you watching uh, any uh, boxing highlights at ESPN Classic to get you uh, motivated? I think Sean John has. I don't watch too much boxing. But, you know, it doesn't look exactly, it doesn't translate exactly, so you have to kind of, you have to kind of fake it. Because if you actually did like a, tried to do a real punch, it wouldn't look right. Yeah, right. your first person view is so narrow, so you're kind of trying to come in from this angle. Well, at that point you end up with some fancy footwork, so you start boxing. Right, right. Like, hey. You probably never see it in first person. Yeah, yeah. What right. doing, I know? mean, if you want to see the first person arms, what it's actually doing, it's, you can kind of see it. So I would love to see that. that. Actual, I'm sure the people on stream would too. So basically that, the, the right punch, or the right punch right here is, is just kind of, kind of odd. So I mean, it's. There you go, guys. You, many people are going to see that into their doom. So yeah, so, I mean, it's just a right skeleton moving, so it's not a, not a big deal. Cool. All right, so we have one more person in here. Save the best for last, right? Of course. Hey, <laughs> hi, my name is Brad Constantine. I'm also an animator here. And I'm knee deep in doing wildlife for H1Z1. So nice. we are going to have uh, an entire food chain in our world. When you create a world, you gotta have some wildlife. So right now I'm working on wolf locomotions. So I just got done reviewing some um, some wolf stuff here on the on the VCR. What is a wolf locomotion? So a wolf locomotion is not a train, right? It's not a wolf train. So <laughs> what we get Steam from design down. is we get a list of stuff, uh -huh. um, and these are the locomotions Ooh, that, that the wolf is going to need in order to chase the deer and chase you. Um, so we're given all of the different speeds that the wolf needs Crawl, to travel walk, on, run. and the distances that they travel in a in a second. So then we are then able to animate exactly to these numerical nice. values. Were you watching like some wildlife for inspiration? Earlier? We were. We were watching uh, actually wolves chase um, elk earlier, which was really nice. Oh, cool. Real fun stuff. And so what I do is I then do quick thumbnail sketches of some of the poses from the live action. So I have... I wish I could um, thumbnail sketch like that. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> right. Some Just of the real key quick, poses that I'm going to need to do in the hour. run later. <laughs> So right now I've got the wolf set up here and I've just started the first pose on a walk cycle. So you guys can come back and check during the day and okay. see oh, yeah. how he's doing there. Cool. So yeah, that'll be cool to come back and see progress on your uh, animation. We've set up a, a full rig in here. Ooh, whoa, so yeah, big little whoa. handles and, and move stuff around. And wow. Does this guy talk yet, Brad? He does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get in close to that. So if you look over here on the right, we've set up all kinds of, these are all of the controls for just his face over here. What? So Jeez. we have everything know that. from, you know, we can open his mouth <laughs> wide, we can, we can twist it around, we can do all of that sort of thing. We've got all of the nice things that a wolf would do, these great little oh, smears nice. in the front and stuff. And, and I didn't know we'd have the, all this rig. That is smears awesome. Smears in the oh, back. Yeah. So we can do Video all games, that. Man. We can, well, for the wolf, pull his mouth around it's a future. As we need to, and <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, he's got eyes. So we can make wolves scary. Yes, that's awesome. We're going for ultra realism on this. So, and we're doing it the way the old animators did in the past. You can see my my homage to them up on the wall. Hey, Walt Disney. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Is that the end of your? You're recognizing on the wall there. Yeah, that's the only animator I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to let's go. Uh, so check back later on the walk. Yeah, we'll be back. Yeah, if you guys want to see specific things. Yeah, we'll probably come we out throughout the day and right. check in. Um, you know, the players are coming at twelve to five, and they'll probably want to see some stuff. And okay, be cool. A good time to come back. Awesome. But. And we want some uh, people to come and do some zombie walks for us. We brought our video. Camera. Oh really? Oh, so, yeah. Is possible. Any of you guys are going to come in. We, can, we, we can need your best zombie walk. So, yeah. and then you can get the walks right into the game, because so people can they they we know. Will, yeah. We will take the yes. best zombie walks and we will actually put them in the game. I like that. It. You heard it here. <laughs> Barricades coming. Good. I just gotta find Liddy. <laughs> he got, he's running around looking for Liddy. <laughs> All right, guys. Camera's coming. Are you ready? All right. This is introduce yourself. I'm Sean, uh, one of the programmers here on H1Z1. All right, and what are you working on? Right now, I'm working on uh, getting the pathfinding stuff, you know, up to par, making it uh, 
so the zombies can actually like yeah. find the players. Zombies, and wildlife. Wildlife. It's yeah. gonna be. I think players are gonna be pretty excited about um, the ability of having that system that we have. So things aren't gonna run through walls and. Uh, oh, they're not gonna run through walls. Shouldn't That's be seen. Well, the so they, thing, right? well, they did for a while in our game. Like we had a lot of issues. Like we've. It's been a huge iterative process for us to get our proper navigation systems in to be able to read the mesh right. And we're still working through a lot of that, but it's really turning out pretty well. Sweet. All right. Next up, we have Mr. Hi, my name is Scott Grotman. I've been working on the server side stuff, so uh, mostly containers like backpacks and uh, the campfires and things like that. And right this minute, I'm fixing a bug where folks drop empty containers when they die. That's my exciting day. Right now. Man, that's like the biggest troll thing ever. He had an, you know, an AR-15. Oh crap! There's nothing on his body. Yeah, it's not good. Not good. Okay. All right, so, what are you looking for somebody? All right, so we have, you guys have met uh, Tom, Tom, obviously. He was in the design meeting. Uh, this is? I'm, I'm Simon, I'm um, a programmer. Um, most recently, I've been working on the UI for H1Z1. Cool. Most of the backend stuff and things that, you know, the underlying system behind the inventory. Right. Nice. Uh, all that stuff as well. Cool. Uh, right now, I'm currently looking into an issue with the UI that might have mentioned it a little bit earlier. <laughs> and it's uh, my distinct pleasure of getting that fixed. Nice. Yeah. Fun time. See, it's yeah. not all fun and games here. At, uh... we got the Let's see. Um, I, I just right turned now. everything into a game. Yeah, just so pretend so it's a game. <laughs> nice. Oh, and you are, sir. So Say it to all the beautiful people at home. Ryan Pavali. I do graphics programming. That means surface, uh, surface algorithms to make the... He's the guy that makes your game look good. Really good. <laughs> well... One of them. One of them, yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's not the guy. He's blame one of the guys. If you don't think it does. Yeah, I have these like way better guys in the other building that you know, back me up. You know the clouds and plants I too? That was this guy. I, that right? That I can take credit for. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait, I mean, okay, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Do you, are you working on anything cool right now? Be, uh, uh, right now I'm syncing the code. <laughs> that so is not I can't really cool. show anything. <laughs> and okay. the effect I'm working on right now is in debug mode, uh, so I can't really show it, but uh, you can kind of gather from this, I'm working on some rain effects, weathering effects. Mm, nice, rain and weather effects. Um, in the environment. Sweet. I think. Oh. All right. So let's uh, move on. Let's move on. So this is a full office. Let me give a warning before we jump in here. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Is, do you mind if the camera swings through here, anybody? Uh, sure. All right. Yes. Spence, <laughs> dude, what is going on here? You, I heard that you said okay, you were going to be on. We're about to be on Inception right here. We're about to go. Do oh, this. Streamception, bro. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Let me. This might do some wonky stuff, right? <laughs> oh, All right. Amazing. So let, first, introduce yourself to everyone. Hi, I'm Greg Spence. I am a programmer here on H1Z1, newly joined the team a few weeks ago, and happy to be working on it, having a blast. You were, you were, um, what other projects you worked on here? Um, I worked on EverQuest Next for a while, and uh, I was on EQ2 also for a very long time. I nice. actually helped out Planet Side 2. First That's time right. I met you, yeah. I created a behavior on an NPC that broke the server during uh, our, was it like Alpha? Or right. I can't remember what it was, pre-release, and this guy came yelling at me. <laughs> Kindly. He's the uh, nicest guy ever. And he yeah, it's like, uh, you broke the server, bro. It's been about, <laughs> yeah, it's been about six months on Planet Side 2. That was a lot yeah. of fun. So last night I walk into this office, and I'm talking about today, like what we're going to do today, this, that, and the other. And uh, Greg says, I'm going to make a neon sign that says H1Z1. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> or at least in like two weeks is what you're thinking. Yeah, I was right? thinking, okay, yeah, you're going to go home and make that. Sweet, I'll see you tomorrow. This was at like 9 o'clock already. He comes in today with this. He actually made one. I, I totally thought he was trolling me. Check it out. And how did you do this? Yeah, how did you make this? You change colors. What, are you serious? Is that a remote? Yeah, you can see two different colors. What? What the? Dude, okay, so you're going to make <laughs> one for all of us now? Sure, we can work something <laughs> like that out. Th this actually office has always been good for that. Uh, we had another guy that was here at one point. I walked in and said, hey, I need a battery backup to test something. This is irrelevant to work. But I walk in here and someone goes, oh, I made one. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, no, I, I made one. Like, I have one. I have it on a cart. You can borrow it if you'd like. It's kind of heavy because it's self-homemade. I'm like. <laughs> so awesome. if you ever need anything, it's just the office. They can engineer all kinds yeah, of things. All right. Well, we are engineers. That's true. <laughs> we are engineers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, we have Tim Lochner. I'm uh, a tools pro or a tools programmer. He's the other one. And uh, <laughs> this is the other guy. guy. Hi, bad guy. guy. <laughs> You'll meet him in just a second. Um, and so basically, our job is to create tools that these guys use to make stuff as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible. Cool. What are you looking at right now? Uh, Any fun ones? Anything Aside cool? from the stream, 
Open the stream open, dude. We like streamception, bro. How's okay, the chat doing, right. by the way? We're yeah. watching you right now. We're watching you right like... now. I see a lot of message deleted. Uh, I don't know if that's a Moobot. <laughs> Me and Moobot are going to fight, man. We do not get along. So he's, even looking, he's actually Close looking at something cool right here. Yeah. Uh, this is our terrain editor. And uh, this is one of the tools that you work on, right? Yeah. So, so this is actually the main tool that I work on. So this is what uh, people like myself uh, in level design or environment design will cr uh, use to create the world. And he's actually the person who's making the tool, help make the tool to make it so we could do this. Um, and he's in the train editor right now. And what are you actually trying to do? So right now I'm, I'm just testing features to make sure that they're solid. What, um, my job, what I'm doing right now is yeah. integrating some of the yeah. features back to PlanetSide 2. Because we have kind of a, sh a shared code base, we can, the features that we develop here, we can send back to PlanetSide 2 and they can use, and the ones that they develop, we can use. And just so people know, PlanetSide 2 and uh, H1Z1 are using the same engine, Forest yeah. Light engine. So there's a lot of back and forth that you guys can work on. So we just stole a feature from them where we can export like a single part of the map at one time, rather than having to do the entire thing, um, which really saves on the size of uh, uh, size of downloads for patches and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so as kind of a, a gimme back, we're going to yeah. give them this feature that we designed um, that allows us to place objects really quickly and conforming them to a slope that you want to put them on or giving them a random rotation. So like this is a sign that would typically go on the, the top of a building or something like that. Um, but if you just kind of place it around, I have it set to just go to like a random parameter. Yeah. And, and so that's really useful for like rock placement, uh, crate placement. Yeah. If you're trying to create a scene that something's like really messy, like if I wanted to create like a barrel spill somewhere, yeah. I don't have to sit there and click a barrel, rotate it, turn it, well, place it. I can just click, 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 click. There you go. Like here's what he did over here with all these barrels. He could just click that, you know, eight different times and the barrels come out randomly rotated. And it's like so that. hard to actually make chaos, right? Like something that was an accident, you're trying to perfectly make it that way. You're like, no, an accident wouldn't be like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It, ends up looking, it, it, yeah, it ends up looking like a, a, a scene that, that you place, but now it's randomly placed and that's what happens in an yeah. accident. You know, stuff just falls. And people who want to see more of this, like you guys are doing streams of like developing, using the train editor, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'm sure you guys will see yeah. a little bit more of the tools Sweet. that we've developed. Um, All right. Can we Thank ambush you. Abram? Or it was yes. Ambushed. What's up, Abram? All right. Talk, talk to the lovely people. Your name, <laughs> your name, sir. I'm David Abram. I'm a tools programmer on the uh, H1Z1 team. And I'm uh, basically developing a uh, system that allows us to place persistent decals in the world. <laughs> nice. That's going to be... That's awesome. Cool. Well, it's definitely something we want. Um, actually, I've worked a lot with uh, with Dave here back and forth with a lot of the fire mode stuff, and we deal with on the weapon side. He's been absolutely integral to making sure that that system is working properly as we intend. Because once again, this is a little bit different of a FPS. Like we need different systems to work here, and he's been really awesome helping out with that too. Nice. I like your R two D two. All right. All right. Let's get let's, let's yeah. uh let's let's go back over. So you've met so far about I don't know. 60% of the people? No, maybe about half. I don't know. Yeah. Did you say that? Do, do, uh, yeah. do, um, what do we get going? What time is it? It's 10. Uh, let's uh, walk over to, this is more, some more artists. I was going to say, we've got work to do eventually, too. Yeah, that's true. Let's uh, check out how we're doing on time. Damage states if they go through here. Like, how we look. I don't know. Looking great. Okay. Well, I know we look great, but. Oh, let's go ahead. Let's, let's talk to Broom. Come on now. Oh, Broom. Yes. Can you fit through here? Are you gonna be alright? Yeah. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Dude, we're, we're gonna we're gonna camera incoming, bro. Just so, guys, if you guys don't know, this is introduce yourself. Should we turn the light on? Matt Broom, character lead on H1Z1. Here, we'll turn on some lights so you guys can actually see. <laughs> I was gonna say that camera. I don't know so this guy is a massive zombie fan. He's also the character lead on H1Z1. Show drawing. Him the fish tank. Look at check this out. The H1Z1 fish tank. It's. It's awesome. All right, we just made my fish famous. <laughs> <laughs> he has he has nothing but zombie movies going on all day long for inspiration. Half the time we walk in here and I'll have to be talking to him about our wearable system or something else, which I, being an implementation designer and weapons and everything, I do a lot of work with the artists to try to get things in the game, like items wise. And I'll come in here and be like, Broom, what? whoa, that's really cool. And like we just sit here <laughs> for like watching five the movie. minutes watching something. Like Pretty that. much. It's like, I love how they did this, that, that, that. Pretty yeah. much this Matt walks around and we go, oh, and by the way, we got to make sure we get that frame of frag right. <laughs> the frame of frag. Right. Yeah. So then we go right oh, back the to the TV set. Exactly. exactly. And watch cool movies all Is day. Is there a, I saw you doing some awesome sketches earlier. You want to show, show the, oh, the yeah. one of these Here, sketches? You know what, actually, 
You want to tell people kind of what you do specifically yeah, like, on this team? Yeah. So basically, what I do on a project is I drive all the aesthetics, the wearables, and the attachments. So we go on Reddit and we look at your guys' comments about you know questions I've seen about what are we going to be able to wear? Are we going to play female characters? The answer is yes, you are going to be able to play female characters. We don't have an announcement date yet. You'll hear about that later, but the answer is yes. Um, are you going to be able to have customized attachments? The answer is yes. Are you going to be able to interchange and find things in the world? You'll hear those announcements later. So we're on Reddit all the time. We're reading your guys' comments. And the answer to a lot of stuff that you're putting up is yes. The answer to when will be announced later. So some of the things that me and Jimmy have been doing that have been a lot of fun is we've been talking a lot about the archetypes in the game. Oh, yeah. And the cool thing is we're all big DayZ fans. We're all big Rust fans. We play a lot of the zombie survival games. Even last night, I was looking at a, a, an Xbox game that I will not mention that looked really cool. So we're always looking at <laughs> other games specifically for great ideas on awesome zombies. And there's one other question before I get to the wearables that I want to answer. Are our zombies scary? Yes. If you've seen shows like Walking Dead, you're going to be really happy with our zombies because we're all Walking Dead fanatics. I want I want to see the zombies. Show us, show us. <laughs> yeah. Can you show us something? Is there yeah. anything something? people yeah. haven't seen, or is Med gonna punch me in the face yeah. for saying that? I don't know. I don't know. Not if Med has ever punched me in the face. If he doesn't care, we can show him. We can show him the next guy in progress. Mm. But I, I think we'll get busted for that. Should I find out? Yeah, find out. I'll be right back. Well, for now. And then what I'll do is I'll pull up um, who's been called Fred, pull which is Fred. funny to me. So why why is he called Fred? Because Reddit called him Fred. Because Reddit called him Fred. And I didn't give go. him a name while I was making. He was just Zombie 01. <laughs> so he was his asset name. So when I saw Fred, he became Fred. I kind of like it. Nice. Which so, is, I think, the first Sony Online character that's been named by Reddit. Actually, I think that's, I think that's yeah. true. The first SOE character named yeah. by Reddit. So there yeah. you go, Fred. They didn't name anybody on Planet Side 2 when we were no, on No, they just called me uh, idiot. No, they called you a lot worse. Than <laughs> I, 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 uh, I brought a tall guy. What did, he, what did the tall guy the say? The tall guy said, we should show it. Okay. He's actually on his way. He's watching the stream from the office. He's oh. like, wait, yeah, of course. Yeah, right, so here's what's funny. You guys are going to actually see what was a surprise for Smith before he sees it. So, so he's going to see it on stream from the office right now. He's going to see it for the first time live on Twitch. <laughs> That's the only reason right now he allowed us to do this, because like, I really, really don't know what he's working he wants on. to watch it, wants to look at it. So I'm not sure how much glare they're going to get on this. So the next guy that's in progress right now. Fred o for Fred 2 Yeah. So the next guy we're working on is just a little bloodier. And what you can see there. is, you can see on his face, here I'll turn on his teeth he, and stuff. He's seen some stuff. There we go. Yeah. So this is going to be the first zombie act that's worked on right now that actually has hair. So for those of you who are not used to seeing game assets in progress, I'll put a different material on his hair so you can take a look at that. Okay, there you go. So you can see his shirt is in progress, and then what will happen is his shirt will get torn up. You can see his uh, zombie hands in progress. But the cool thing is, to give you guys an idea of how dark we're going with this stuff, you know, again, like that Walking Dead style, if you get in real close, you can see things like his teeth detail. That looks awesome, dude. And then we can go even farther with this Has guy. Bill seen this yet? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Twitch is seeing this. Bill's seen it, but Smith okay. hasn't. Right. And this is uh, zombie number two, so you guys can stop looking at the same zombie in all of our teasers. We'll start showing a few more of these as we get closer and closer. So how are you, like, when you are trying to build a person's face, and mm -hmm. you have to build their teeth and their gums and their tongue and everything, like, you have to really look at a human body and, like, a mm -hmm. zombie, like, all these zombie movies you you're watching, you really have to get a ton of research. Well, you've also got to have oh, a yeah. demented view on what someone would look like after beat over the head with a bat and rotted for a few few it's months. Yeah. Uh, correct. <laughs> yeah. So what we're doing is, the, the cool thing is, right now, what we have is, we have a base model, and that base model will be almost like the inner workings of your anatomy, and it's going to be veins, it's going to be your cartilage, it's going to be bones, it's going to be muscle. Sure. So what will happen on this is, We'll actually have one surface layer. <laughs> what the fuck? I've never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> the funny part is he really has it. <laughs> um, Twitch uh, has named it Bob. Is oh, this Bob? Yeah, Bob. Is Bob. Bob. So, I don't know if that makes so, you Neil or Bob, but... Uh, so now it's Fred and Bob. Fred I guess so. Two you guys are, hey, Twitch, you guys are very clever. You guys are very clever. So, so original. Yeah. Thank you. Fred and Bob. Way to bring a character to the names. <laughs> Scary change you come up with. 
Right. It's really close to John Doe. That's the scariest part. <laughs> so basically what we'll have is we'll have a base underworking mesh that is muscle, cartilage, and bone. And that mesh will be underneath a skin mesh. What you actually do is you paint in 3D and you render at the same time in the texture and you paint down to uh, the anatomically correct version underneath the character. So you paint layers. Then you combine all these layers together and you actually export these guys and take them into the game. So you're, you're, you're technically doing them all at once. So these arms, for instance, on this guy, I'll give you an idea of how, how kind of detail we get. So the cool thing about these programs Let's do something fun so these guys can actually be entertained for a second. <laughs> All right, let's beef this up. So, for instance, you know, we got a vein right here. It's pretty boring. It's not popping out. Well, the cool thing about these programs that makes this fun is you can go in here, and this is actually the 3D mesh right now and the high res, and you can just bump these veins out. And just to give you an idea, an idea this is the actual in game 3D character right here. So, you're in real time. Editing the 3D model. This is the actual guy that will go into the game. All of the surface details will be reprojected at the same time as I'm painting on him. And then what will happen is, as I'm painting on this guy in real time, he will ultimately become this, which will look more familiar to some of the more savvy game fans out there. It'll look like this, which is how you're used to seeing in the texture map. So what's actually happening is that looks you're actually painting on <laughs> the 3D character that lives in the game in about 14 to 16 million polys. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's really, really cool. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, Matt, you've been the uh, uh, marquee dev so far. And yeah, us. everyone knows how we <laughs> Bob and Fred. Bob and Fred. There Don't you hurt yourself with the uh, next What's your t Twitter so people can follow you, so people can uh, see Is more? Is this H1Z1 underscore Think and Broom? Yeah. Pretty sure it is. H1Z1 underscore right. M, yeah. M Broom? Yes. All right. Perfect. Cool. And I'm watching to make sure I'm getting new followers. Yeah, and he and he's looking. If I don't get at least a hundred, it's not going to be Bob. Uh oh. If he doesn't get at least a hundred Twitch followers, Twitter Since followers. When does Twitter allow people to tag you in photos? Uh, so I don't that's know. What? Oh wait, hold on. I just got tagged in a AKA photo. Last week. <laughs> I got the one I just tagged. Oh uh, okay. I was yeah. like, what is going on? Sorry. So this is a. Uh, I'm going to put you guys on blast right now. This is a. Uh, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Taina uh, Berardi. I'm the H1Z1 Global Brand Manager. These these girls work behind the scenes ladies. and uh, ladies, ladies, sorry, <laughs> they, that's per, that's exactly what they we do. Keep, they just, we keep they these keep, guys in check for saying check. things like that. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> and, you guys uh, can say whatever whatever is uh, yeah. on your mind. <laughs> awesome. See, free reign. I can say whatever I want. No, Hi. Within reason. <laughs> just no cursing. I, I can do that. Yeah. Hi, I'm Michelle Cagle. I head up PR here at SOE. We have a very transparent approach, as you can see. <laughs> awesome. So All you right. can't tell if it makes your job easier or harder. It's I don't know who's sitting hey, over there on the, on the team bag. <laughs> That's Shannon. Oh, She's yeah, Shannon. I know Shannon. Okay. Yeah, totally. Hi, Shannon. So there you go. We're just um, working on some uh, YouTube stuff. Awesome. All right, so the rest of the dev team, this way. Just wanted to give you guys behind the scenes. It's not all just developers here and game designers. We also have PR and marketing and tons of community behind the scenes. We have uh, Tim, the cable wrangler. Tony. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, and uh, of course, Andre, the cameraman. If you guys should know who he is, if you follow Planet Side too. The um, news crew coming in? And uh, yeah, this news crew. So actually, introduce yourself. Uh, I'll start with you, Steve. Hi there, Steve George. I'm the producer on H1Z1. I've uh, been at Sony Online for about 15 years, so I've been doing this for a long time. Some of you might know me from Free Realms, so there's my sad oh, chatty. Oh, sad chatty. <laughs> so I get to do all the boring stuff that nobody else wants to deal with, like, <laughs> yeah, what like the schedules. Do? So oh, that fun. Looks awesome. we, we get to look at everybody's progress. When you yell things like, hand soft, hand soft. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Check in. Check kids, in. If you, kids, if you want to grow up and be a producer, this is your future, right? <laughs> I'm also in charge of making sure the builds go smooth, and uh, whenever we go live, I'll be the guy that's always... Uh, work on getting the publish out to you guys on time. Work with the team, keeping everything coordinated. I also do some programming on programming on the side. I wrote a tool for our team that does all of our server management, which is awesome. And, yeah, it, it, it allows them to quickly launch servers and test things out and iterate quickly. And we're also doing a little experiment over here. This is a uh, we're trying to come up with a web interface to where we can actually click anywhere on the map and drop things in the world while it's live. So you might be walking around and 
Yeah. I'll see you moving around here. Steve's in a bad mood. <laughs> Bam, give you a couple zombies to play with. <laughs> nice. So this is just a test, but well, this might turn into something big later down the road. Sweet. Yeah, and yeah. you know, we are, you know, I don't even know what state this is. I guess people are calling it pre-alpha. But oh, this yeah. is like a state of the game where stuff really starts getting, uh, the meat starts really starting getting fleshed out. Basically. Totally, totally. And uh, so many things start getting added later. And it, I, this is a really awesome part of development. Um, so let's move over to one of our game designers here. Let's introduce you. Oh yeah, he was actually on stream. He was on stream earlier. You saw him as. <laughs> Hello. He's a robot. He can only turn ten degrees at a time. I'm Paul Kerko. I'm working on the crafting for the game. Um, I've been at Sony forever, also, and worked on lots of different crafting systems. So this is. What other games did you work on at Sony? EverQuest, EverQuest Two, Planet Side Two, Free Realms, Dark Kingdom. Jeez. That's a lot. What haven't I worked on? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an easier question, yeah, probably. Exactly. Um, so right now I'm working on the wooden barricade. I think I actually have all the data stubbed out, so you can see it in our little crafting window here. He's working on the feature uh, that we are working on for the development. Oh, by the way, sorry, I'm going to interrupt real quick. Uh, if you're just now joining us, we haven't really been reiterating what's yeah, going on. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, we are in the middle of a 12-hour live stream. We started here at 9 a.m. this morning, going to 9 p.m. tonight. Here pretty soon, players are going to be able to come in the studio. Sony Shock, follow uh, oh, nice. Steve George over here. <laughs> he needs some followers. I tweet him out every once in a while. I give you some inside information. That's right. He's, he's, he's got all the cool stuff. He usually experiments around with the builds, so it really is cool when he tweets. But yeah, um, but we're basically building a feature in 12 hours. That's what yes. this 12-hour live stream is. And one of the features was a barricade. No. And Paul, look at Paul's getting... Oh, Paul's getting I'm just crafting here. <laughs> he's just trying to craft. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my... Later. <laughs> oh. He just flies and away. And he dev hacks away. Because he has to I'm work. trying to craft. You. So he's working on the feature that we that you guys wanted early, uh, uh, at the end of the day today. So yeah. he's got work to do. This is what he was talking about. So go ahead, Paul. So yeah, he's so working on crafting. It's stubbed out right now. I just really need art and the, the socketing stuff. Um, so let me find a house to go live. While he's finding the house there, I want to kind of explain as well. Like as designers, we're in kind of a, a different spot than a lot of the coders and other people that you're going to be seeing. Because during this process, we can put things in for data very quickly. We could technically put in an aircraft carrier, but without code to be able to support said aircraft carrier and how it's going to work, and without the assets to make it so, it doesn't do much. But uh, Paul's going to kind of show us what he has so far, I guess. So let's see. Um, let's pretend I want to live here. I actually did this in a play test the other day, and it was awesome. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what doesn't work right now, that soon will, is things like this will have sockets in it. And whenever you're placing this wall, it'll snap to it and be really nice. Right now, everything just kind of is floating out in space. Um, you can see I'm placing my little barricades. And this is what players are going to be uh, using, right? He just basically opened up the crafting window, crafted it, and then it popped into the world, and then he's going to place it where he wants to barricade himself. Yeah, so so he's, not doing, here. he's not doing any kind of like crazy dev hackery now. He's actually placing it in the No, world. this is pretty close. The, uh, the difference with the players is that it'll snap in place and only fit on walls mm -hmm. uh, where, where it belongs. Because right now you could just place these vertical standing things anywhere in the world and it would look crazy. Yeah. Um, I actually like that. Right in the middle of the road, I see Clay coming. Yeah. So what I was going to check was I also put in the behavior for breaking these things. Um, so once we get done with art, it'll like fire off particles and change its state. Right now it's just the data, so this will probably turn into some crazy other... I'm going to shoot it. By the way, this is my fault. This axe is so slow right now. I apologize. Yeah, what did you do, Jimmy? I borked it. Nice decals. Oh, dude, that's an awesome barricade so far. Um, for some reason, it's not taking damage. Um, so yeah, it would be damageable, um, and then like, you know, the wood would be deteriorated, and eventually it would shatter and break, and the people sure. get in. Yeah. Um, but these have collision and everything. The zombies will probably come up and start eating these things. Well, you know, it's been what an hour, if that, and you're already making progress on our barricade, so um, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think so. so yeah, like, now it comes the fun part. We start figuring out things like the pathing side of it, the socketing part, and everything yeah. else. Yeah, right. So there you go, guys. That's Paul Carico. He uh, is working on the barricades for crafting. Thanks, right, you guys. Let's move on. Yep. See you guys later. Where? So here's some artists. Oh, here's a fun. This is gonna be a fun cubicle. Uh, so let's start with uh, Zim over here first. Let's introduce yourself, sir. I'm Ryan Zimmerman. I'm a senior artist here at Sony Online. I'm in charge of uh, wearables, such as backpacks, hats, shoes, anything the character is going to wear. 
Nice, and I see you got a backpack up there. What is that? Can you, can you give us a little insight on that? All right, so this is a just generic backpack. Um, basically, I model it in ZBrush, and then I, uh, I can actually show you ZBrush. Model it in ZBrush, and then um, this is insanely high, a couple million polys, so then we take it into Maya and bring it down to something more reasonable, a thousand polys or something like that. And then uh, from there, we can texture it by applying uh, a texture to it, and we can make variations off of the same mesh to keep overhead low. Wow, that's so, cool, man. And that's one of the biggest pushes as well. I mean, we've talked about that already, is performance is key with this game, especially correct. with the player count and everything we're going with, and right. um, creative minds like Zim here come up with ways for us to be able to reuse as much as we can, still look great, and uh, be great in game. Absolutely. That's sweet. All right, we'll stop bothering you. Go on and make your backpacks and uh, all the other awesome stuff that you're going to give me for free because um, I want all that cool stuff. Uh, <laughs> are we okay to show off the collection over here? What's I don't know. Case, are you ready for this? For what? All right, guys. There you go. <laughs> I think this guy's a fan of something. I don't uh, know what. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Matt Case. Um, I am a senior artist here on H1Z1. And... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my hovel. Let's uh, get a look at that. Let's look at all this stuff. It is awesome. This is pretty awesome. It, it's not going to come off as cool on camera, but actually seeing it is... You, uh, how, do you know how many you have in here? Do you have a number? Um, in here? Uh, roughly, I think a thousand. I had to downsize when we moved to the little cubicles here. I remember um, when that's you weren't here the day that they moved for us, like when we moved to this office, they, people came in to do that. And I looked over and I'm like, holy crap, how is Case going to get into this? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Matt, what are you working on right there? Um, I am working on an apartment building. Um, uh, what? For the, the nice. for the world. <laughs> um, and basically, I was given the, the uh, someone else built the exterior of the building, and I've been given floor plans uh, by design of what they want in each of these levels. So we'll have the ground floor, several levels of just regular apartments, <laughs> and an apartment suite, along with an elevator shaft that uh, apparently you're going to be able to fall down. So That's going to be amazing. I can't wait until you have that done so I can place it and prop it and put it into the world. Uh, this is the first time I've seen this and it's awesome. Yeah, I am I just got this last night so I'm still kind of in the planning phase of how I'm going to cut it up and uh, put all the rooms in it. So uh, that's where I'm at. So. Awesome. Um, quick question. I'm actually looking at chat on my phone right now. They asked what your favorite uh, Transformer is. Favorite uh, Transformer? Uh, any particular figure, let me see. It would probably be either my original Optimus Prime or the one that's standing up there in the middle. Nice. Uh, Sweet. So Digging it. Can't go wrong with Optimus Prime. Never. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Matt. All right, awesome. thanks a lot, guys. That building looks Enjoy cool. the rest of the day. <laughs> For sure. Clay doesn't know who Optimus Prime is. No. Confirmed. Who Optimus Confirmed. Prime is. Hold on. Breaking news. Uh oh. So, I said if they give Ow. us. I said if they give us. <laughs> If I got 100 followers, yeah. that his name would be Bob. Wait, okay. Uh, the next zombie yeah. is Bob. Oh, yes. We got it in 12 seconds. Got you got 100 followers in 12 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> All right, players. guys, let's try this again. Like I'm it. Jimmy Wynn. Follow me next time. Higher goals. Excellent. Higher goals. Watch out for the quarterback. All right. Tom, um, you've met Tom. Say hi, Tom. You have fancy screens on hi, right Tom. now. And oh. that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I like. I generally have things. fancy so, screens. So uh, there's probably aspiring programmers in the Twitch channel right now. So we we talk to them yeah. about... There, uh, there's a lot of designers that get a lot of love and artists that get a lot of love. But I don't ever see programmers getting a lot of love on streams. So why don't you... Uh, for all the aspiring programmers out there, show them what you're doing right here. Talk to them through that there is... Uh, a career in programming for sure more than there is for artists and designers personally I think. Oh absolutely. I mean, there, um, <laughs> one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm looking at some of the issues we have. Uh, like we found a little hitch in the client that occasionally comes up when you're doing certain things. So I'm looking through our timing information and that's what this display over here is actually. Is It gives you an example of the kind of things we can see inside the client in terms of what frame rate's doing in different cases. You can see that you know it's kind of consistent. This is all kind of a consistent time, and there's like a little hiccup that shows up. Mm. So we're trying to figure out what's actually tracking, what's actually causing that, that to happen. So I'm going through some of the code, and right. I've been talking with some of the other engineers, try and track down the actual code that's causing that. Nice. Uh, it takes a little while. And what is uh, the program you're using on the left here for people that don't know? Uh, this over here? Yes. Visual Studio? Visual Studio. Yeah. So there you go, kids. So Visual Studio Suite, and we have a lot of uh, performance testing analytics. 
A lot of automated stuff too, which is pretty cool. Yeah, pretty awesome. Um, it's uh, programmers are basically the uh, the heart of the game. They're they're, they're the, the voodoo they're, practitioners. They're the brain and the heart. We I say guess. things like make guns shoot not straight, and yeah. they go okay, and they do a bunch of math and things they're, happen. They're literally making the things that we imagine come to life. It's awesome. So and it's actually on this team, uh, especially with guys like Mitch that you met earlier. He makes things that he imagines come to life without telling us, and then we all just explode in the middle of town. Nice. It's great. So, <laughs> these guys aren't here. They're probably scared of us. We scared them away. I saw some emails from uh, a couple of them last night. Bill's yeah. working on the barricade. Uh, he was the art director that you met earlier. Oh, Dayquil Bill. Yeah. Oh, he's got, he was sick today, and he still came in. Yeah, he's actually been sick for a few days, so Don't please. The, wait, well, can, is it uh, transferable via microphone? Through camera yeah. to internet. <laughs> this, is, this is the start of H1Z1 right here. So I know it's only been a short time, but uh, do you have any progress on the barricade? Uh, the only thing I've got right now that I just did is I had to place, it's kind of hard to see here, um, all these little locators for where the barricades can go in the house. Um, I still got to do a little bit back and forth, but what I have to do is I place these, these are the sockets that we mentioned uh, before, and then what we're going to, these sockets are where things attach to. It's pretty kind of straightforward with the term socket. Now I gotta go make the barricade, and then once I have the barricade, I'll need to make sure each one of these is rotated and positioned correctly so they all point up. So, Sweet. it'll take a little bit more time. But. And so what mm -hmm. Paul's, what you guys saw earlier with Paul is he was making the barricade, and then that's gonna be where it sockets onto the house. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and then once I have this, we, any number of barricades can be made once I've got it you know, in place. They'll just, we'll make sure that the snap position is the same. That's cool, man. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Very right. cool. There's only all right. a few more Take your people. vitamins. Take it back. <laughs> See how everyone There's to only a few more people left to meet, so let's meet them real quick. Uh, should then, we go around? Should we go around, or, or should we go around this way? Let's go. Go this that way. way. We have a I don't, we have a long cord uh, mess here, so we it's gotta, fun. We gotta make sure that we don't. By the way, guys, I'm monitoring chat as we walk around, and uh, I did notice a couple people were like, "Oh, good job, one minute pro, one minute interview." Can you guys come around this way? Some of the, uh, well, yeah, we have to go around because of the cord. Right. Um, a couple people were like, oh, one minute interview with programmer. Sorry about that. We are working today. A couple of these guys. You guys should meet Kyle. Oh, yeah, meet Kyle. Oh, should I write it? Yeah. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hope to see all of you today. I'll be at the registration desk beginning right now. Hope to see you guys soon. If you guys are actually coming down here from 12 to 5, uh, Kyle's really awesome. Uh, ask him for anything, or five bucks even, he'll just give it to you. He's, he's one of the most generous people yeah. I've met, bar not in Wow. Pretty good. He's uh, also on our brand team. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, Michelle has something to show you guys. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's her Twitter handle. Look oh, man. Everyone's what? just Wait, pushing off the viewership right now. Oh, we can't. The lighting's bad. Oh, oh maybe no. It's blown out. It's blown yeah, out. Yeah, you need a Sharpie. Oh. It's ninja. Oh, oh. It's ninja kitty Here. underscore oh. SOE. Ninja kitty SOE. If you guys follow me, Wait, I'll tweet I want, out her handle right now. I will now. tweet out my handle, too. <laughs> and tweet out Ty. <laughs> Come on. And tweet out Kyle. It's the real Adam Clegg is my Twitter handle. His Twitter handle is at the real Adam Clegg. Um, Sorry, what's up? What's so this is, uh, this is the, some Inception streaming right there. Uh, here's Tony who is our community manager and going? Uh, master of all things community. If you want to be a community manager, guys, for all you aspiring game community managers out there, uh, you get to sit in a beanbag. Sit in a beanbag chair with your iPhone plugged into your laptop and uh, watch multiple Twitter streams, Reddit, and Twitch ban chat. people on Twitch chat. Have you been banning a lot, or is MoveBot going on a rampage? <laughs> MoveBot is going on a rampage. <laughs> nice. I yes. feel bad, and I told you this when I was on Planet Side. Me and MoveBot are going to fight, right. dude. MoveBot is I, very... I stand for the plebs. Mo MoveBot is an plebs. angry child. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we are at. Uh... Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey. hey, we're going to say hi to you. We have a camera. So here are a few of our um, and artists, environment artists, and uh, uh, let's start with. Start with Ruby. Ruby. Hey. Introduce oh. yourself. I am Ruby. I'm the environment artist, well, one of the environment artists on this team. I'm currently working on the Governor's Mansion that is going to be one of the POIs. Nice. So uh, take us through the Governor's Mansion. Let's see. I want to see. I, I am being selfish here. I want to see because I'm going to be, you know. You're going to be putting this in game and figuring it out. Yeah. This yeah. looks awesome. So this is going to be a major POI in the game. Uh, something that is going to be a hotly contested area in H1Z1. Uh, I, probably the best players in the servers will own the Governor's Mansion. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it may or may not have zombie heads in the basement. Oh, and it may or may not just have zombies protecting it. Wow. <laughs> I like it. Zombie heads in the basement. You can't just say that without showing zombie heads in the basement. Well, I don't have any. That's all. Oh, she's not there yet. She's, she's not, not there, there yet. yet. Okay. 
That's okay. We'll get there. So that's cool. So like, how many rooms is it? Uh, there's currently... I, how many bathrooms? You know, I might want to rent this place. There's three rooms in the top, one master bedroom with uh, its own bathroom. Oh, you're nice. Right there. And then there's another one that's in the hallway. Then there's just the kitchen and the living room downstairs. And then there's the infamous basement. Whoops. Basement, something you don't see a lot of here in California. Actually. I just <laughs> yeah. thought about that. I don't know why that is. And I won't Sweet. go down to the basement because there's a secret down there. Oh, okay, all right. Fair. Fair. Awesome. Okay, cool. So that's that's Ruby, everybody. Carson, this looks exciting. Carson. Carson. Look at Carson's looking at. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's let him introduce himself. I'm Carson. <laughs> and I'm exciting. I do environments and a lot of random props lately. Like Paul Carico will ask me for a rabbit trap one day, and I just drop whatever I'm doing and make a rabbit trap. Or today, I think I'm going to make some stick, some sharp sticks. So that'll be cool. What uh, what are these rocks you're working on? Well, these rocks already existed, but I wanted to put. We've got like a directional shader that, basically, depending on the rotation of the object, moss will just magically appear on top or that's whichever really cool. direction you want so that's really useful for placement so uh yeah like it'll do that in the train editor as well which is cool and i think i don't understand the shader at all so let's look at something else <laughs> like every time <laughs> Wait, what did you every say? time i change something it just breaks and does bad stuff i don't like it so we don't like bad things here at soe but, uh, yeah i condone them yeah i've also been tasked to do a lot of little random Survivor mini camps in the world. That's been pretty fun. Nice. So. We actually saw some of those on stream. Yeah, I could show you a couple of the ones I've been. Yeah, show on us a so, show us a mini camp that you worked on. And this is will, this will be places where players can walk up, uh, assess the situation, see if there's zombies around, find some loot, maybe make camp there. Yeah. Um, sorry, confirmed. The stream has named the rock. <laughs> <laughs> we have Rocky the Rock. <laughs> No, is Carson the Rock or uh, Carson? You okay with Rocky? That's a pretty badass name. Yeah, the Rock. Oh, that's like the best more like because I look like because <laughs> you looked really strong. Yeah, I think that's why. All right, so he's loading up the uh, train editor zone here. Let's see if I can figure out somewhere that I've worked previously. He's basically selecting a chunk, centering on top of it, um, and it's going to take him to where he's going to show us. This is the terrain editor, if you're familiar with any of our work in progress design streams. Mm -hmm. You've seen probably myself working in here. Yep. Oh, no, they just renamed the rock to Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like you have a lot of stuff off. Let's see. There you go. So there's a lot of things that you can't see in the train editor that you can see in the world, so that's why it looks kind of like open and nothing's there. But yeah, uh, since we're using Speed Tree, we haven't set it up correctly yet to actually. See. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was awesome. I saw that. <laughs> so here's a little camp that you made. Yeah. Oh, so this is cool. Some plywood, a mattress, some loot. I don't know. Pretty simple. Here's my little thing that keeps my. Uh, my my wood dry. So nice. Rain. Someone's been camping. Someone's yeah. been camping out here and, and wants to get saved. Of course. Uh, ben and Dan. Oh, it's a nice little. Yeah. Oh, here's, this one's pretty fun. Look, wasn't sure if you guys were still there. So oh, here's okay. a little, uh, <laughs> we, we just walked away. You're still talking. Yeah, yeah. Camera all over here. Sorry, we're just little, enjoying. Fishing dock I made. It's going to be pretty fun. Nice because we're going to have fishing eventually, right? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked about it. We'll see. We will. Don't do this to me. Wait, put the camera straight on me to zoom in. Uh, fishing, we'll get confirmed. it done. We really want to do it. We really do. <laughs> I want that to be the, the one random thing we do today. Let's just get fishing in, no problem. There's Hobo Fort. Hobo Fort. Oh, that's a good name. That's sweet, dude. And these little areas have uh, look like campfires that are already kind of there. You come by, find some wood, and try to camp out. Existing campfire that you can blast with your torch to light on fire. And, uh, is that? Well, it's right now. It's how we have it. Like, well, we have a few different ways, right? Like we'd, we'd rather have a, many ways to get this done. Yeah. Uh, realistically, we were talking about this the other day. I mean, having the torch in game just to start with. I mean, a little OP. I mean, Clegg's standing over there. I'm like, aha! Actually, on fire. I actually have a special announcement. You have a special announcement? I just want to give a shout-out to Super... Hold on, are we looking? 
I want to give a shout out to Super One D and Rag No Rock. No reason. Just want to give a shout out to those guys. If anybody's uh, paying attention. Mm -hmm. All right. Hopefully they caught that. Uh, let's anyways, go this way. let's keep going. Let's go this way. Sorry, I'm still waking up here. What do we get going on? It's fun living. Hey guys. Hi. Do you have this a moment? Is, this is our listen. This is, might be our last stop on the tour, right? This yeah, is this the, is this this ends the tour. We saved the best for last. Oh, this far. Yes. Wow. Yeah. This far. We so let's start with, the best. Let's save the best for the last. Let's start with John. Um, Introduce yourself, John. Well, I'm not. I am the best, so you should go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, certainly not. So yeah, hi. My name's John. I am a trained artist, um, and make a lot of. Grass plate, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing most yeah. of the tree stuff, right? Speed tree and um, that's like kind of about okay. half what I do. Do the you know, as you know, the height field train stuff. I, Adam and I work together on how the train needs to be formed for world building. Um, I do a lot of the texturing and uh, the masking of the world, things like that. Uh, the what we call radio flora, which is the small shrubs, things like this that are incidentals that are on the terrain. So I'll create that and create how those are masked throughout the world. And then, um, actually it's kind of a, let me find a, a good spot. I see your mouse pad there. The, oh yes. yes, yes. So we better do that while we're here. That's yeah. Right. Representing. Okay. <laughs> TRG is Representing. a uh, TR scumbag uh, plant slide two outfit. Just so. yeah. I just want to point out that on this team you're outnumbered. But <laughs> I am. That. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Adam is a really non-biased kind of you know, <laughs> commentary. You know, it's, we 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 really appreciate that amount. No. Anyway, so um, so I do this kind of uh, thing. Of course, I jump in and help uh, mold uh, the rest of the height field. But then on top of that, there is some. Um, new technology we're starting to use called speed tree that um, Adam and Jimmy had just mentioned and it's uh, technology from this company that's been doing trees for uh, you know they do it for movies cinemas they uh, actually had trees that were in um, Avatar the latest movie uh, Noah and uh, they also do real-time game graphic trees and uh, that's obviously the technology we're using so I took that and I brought that in um, after our great programmer uh, Paul uh, integrated that technology on the code side and then I just literally me I just took the trees and uh, exported them and compiled them into um, our game and so we have a whole bunch more trees probably more than maybe any of our other games yes yeah. yes I mean this the scales yeah, show the mask yeah um, show oh, actually the mask. I show do have that uh, mask so, so yeah. show the mask while he's while he's doing that apparently um, I'm st I'm still dubbed Idra and he has been dubbed George Clooney Congratulations, by Did the you, way. That's a huge thing. Chad George, has dubbed you George Clooney. You're George Clooney now. Do, how much of the map matters? It's all right. Just, yeah. throw, just, throw, just, show, yeah, so, just show what you're working on. So this is kind of like a little close-up here. We have the terrain, and I come in and I mask out based on a whole bunch of filters and things that um, I have available through um, our terraforming. And I create these, you know, basically grayscale masks uh, where I want the trees, where I don't want the trees. For example, here's a lake. So clearly I want trees on the, uh, you know, the coast and not inside the water. So every here's single white, every single white like line that. that they're looking at is a tree, basically. Right, or a cluster where a tree might be, exactly. Nice. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of what I'm doing there. And then of course I include out the roads and things like that. Um, you know where we want it you know a clear path and uh, that's pretty much how the masks work so I take all those compile those together and then for each given tree I say all right mask number one I want a, a red maple tree two a pine tree and so forth nice and that's kind of what we're doing that's sweet well thanks yeah. John I appreciate it uh, the chat appreciates it and uh, let's look over to uh, Rich over here all right Rich your time to shine hey. introduce yourself yeah, I'm Rich Schoberg. I do the effects for the game and a few other things while I'm at it. We're working out right now. Um, You're working with Lenny here on the barricade, right? Yeah, the idea of we got uh, a effect that's currently used for the when the hatchet hits hits wood, wood chips go flying, and it's sort of an impact effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we also as far as you can send out particles like that, but we're also going over the uh, decals. So when 
a bullet or a projectile, and now melee weapons hit things. You can plop down one of these um, decals on the, the object you hit or on the person. So that's cool. But we need to beef up these, um, and, and it can also it's not just flat. It'll look like it gouged a hole into the thing, which is really cool. So shaders. What was that uh, zombie you were showing? What you saw on your screen earlier? Oh, uh, uh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, what is this? That's the money. Well, this is yeah. <laughs> so that's a particle effect that you made to put on the zombie, right? Yeah. So fire, smoke, embers. There's a flickering. Uh, let's make it nighttime here. Change the time of day in here. It's just showing us a wood chipper, and then he's got this zombie on fire saving. Yeah, place. right. He's saving. He's saving yeah. a freaking. He yeah. Play with all the toys. Well, yeah. yeah. It's the little subtle stuff, and it's the big fun stuff. So this this is our new tool for working with effects, and I can load the guy in. And he can, um, you know, I can test it out how he how he reacts. <laughs> nice. Because if he's moving, the effects maybe wanted to move with him, maybe wanted to fly off. Sure. So um, there was a nice death in here somewhere. Um, ooh, it's this uh, eating eating. <laughs> I love how he's just on fire. He's eating. <laughs> eating confirmed. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't mind. Zombie eating confirmed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, attacking. So we can test, you know, different. Distances and we can set set it for different. Um, <laughs> Chad just said, "Bob, no <laughs> levels of detail." So if someone's on a faster machine and crank up the effects, we can turn things down. You can't turn them off, but we can optimize them a lot. And this new one lets us um, control more than we used to be able to keep. Um, like if there's a lot of fires, house on fire, or big vehicle on fire, it used to be that every little plume of fire was counting as its own thing and now we can coalesce them together less draw calls more efficient so a lot more efficient and uh, but yeah we got a lot of good stuff coming with this newer tool sweet that's awesome oh my gosh that's see awesome. rich is the best thanks rich. <laughs> all right guys well i don't even know what that doing. wraps up the tour that wraps I, up the I, dev tour here's so hopefully hold on i'm gonna say something hopefully you guys got a uh, good insight on what it's like to see a game dev team. I mean, you guys got to see basically everything. You got to see animators, environment artists, uh, particle effects artists, coders, designers, and it's not engineers. Over. Yeah, it's not over at all. Once again, I want offices, to... CEOs, offices. <laughs> we get to see offices because once again, game development is all about offices. Don't forget that. Yeah. Uh, just a quote from Jace Medley, 2014. Um, so one thing I do want to point out: a couple of you guys in chat were like, "Man, these interviews are pretty short for some of these guys." Guys like programmers, throughout the day, we're going to be checking back in on as we can. The last thing we want to do is interrupt any sort of progress yeah. they're making. It is a very yeah. intensive process. So and if you didn't see us before, the animators, we're going to check in with in-progress stuff, the stuff that they're animating as well. So it's not, you know, we can't just sit at their office all day. We have yeah. one more, actually, by the way. Oh. You come back this way. There's an edge kitty at us, underscore SOE. Woo! <laughs> we have a uh, camera crew oh, yeah, incoming. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. All right. Hello. Just making sure. Yeah, he, he wasn't in a, his <laughs> office was closed. Yeah. His office yeah. was closed when we walked by here earlier. So <laughs> we are now here today with hey. introduce yourself. I'm Paul Ballon. Um, I'm a programmer on H1Z1, and I've been working a lot on trees. So here, let's turn the light on. So we're very serious about our trees here on H1Z1. <laughs> you like? It's just funny the third person in a row that's like trees. That's what we're working on. Yeah, so I'm, I'm mostly working on trying to get the uh, trees into gameplay. Um, having a lot of trees in the game, um, making them harvestable so you can uh, gather wood from them. Um, first, uh, let me show you what a tree looks like when you chop it down. Um, so you can see it turns into a stump. Uh, that's that's what it's doing right now. It's going to eventually fall over. Um, nice. So it'll look like it's falling over, and then you'll get the wood stumps from it or the wood locks from it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anything interesting? So there are a lot of trees in the view. Um, we have like three hundred thousand trees in this area. Uh, that's. A lot. That's a lot. The word you're looking for is insane. It's, it's, yeah. it's, a it's a challenge to render that many trees. Uh, they give they give a great um, they get a, they give a great set of like horizons. geometry for the for the sun to shine through and make these really cool god rays. Nice. Um, let's see. 
One of the cool things about trees is that they are a great sign of player activity. So if somebody's harvesting a whole bunch of trees, it, they, le they tend to leave a whole bunch of stumps around like a beaver. Um, uh. This is a great way to find where other players are, are living and you can go and gank them. Uh, I'm sure uh, a common question people are wondering right now is how, how long does the tree stay a stump? Uh, what, do we, what do we want, basically? Well, first, first we tried making them grow back quickly, uh, and they were growing back in like 50 seconds. Oh, but wow. then, but then, uh, but then finding that they were a good way to tell where people were, were uh, living in the level, in the world. Um, we've decided to make them grow back a lot more slowly, so. And this is something we can tune, obviously, yeah. as each build goes by, um, but until yeah. we get that magic sweet spot. It's gonna be cool, though. I, I, I imagine people running, and all of a sudden you see trees that have just been recently chopped down, and you're like, uh-oh. Well, yeah, and that's, <laughs> that's the most fun part, is when you actually get players outside the company in, and we get a chance to tune that out. I mean, yeah, for sure. That's, that's where it really gets exciting. Yeah, one of the other cool things about the trees is that we're, we're going to support hiding in hiding in a in the brush nice. and instead of it just actually um, relying on the geometry to hide you if you're in the brush there's going to be a gameplay element where if you've been in there for a little while you'll um, you'll go into a camouflage state where you actually won't even show up on the other clients um, nice. until you move again or fire your weapon so it'll Things be like, like a that. true camouflage, hiding in a bush state, some, some uh, another way to uh, kind of hide from either zombies or players. Yeah, it's one of the game mechanics that we really liked in some other games that we that we played, and um, we're gonna try to get that in H1Z1 as well. Sweet. Well, thanks for letting us into your office. Oh yeah. Really cool. Yeah, do you guys want to see a yeah. diagram of how the tree chop is gonna eventually work? Yeah, sure. So. This is how we're going to do it. When you hit the tree, your first whack with the axe is going to show, it's going to change it into a, uh, a stump and a detached version of the tree. And as you hit the tree, the detached part is going to lift up. You're not going to notice it because it's just going to move up ever so slightly. And each whack is going to shake the tree. And as it's recovering from that impact, it's going to move up just a little bit and that's gonna make it look like you're actually taking chunks out of the tree, and then on the last whack, it's gonna fall over. And we think we're gonna have that uh, falling tree uh, actually collide and cause damage. So we'll wow. see how that goes. I, I, once again, I keep hating to be back careful to Clay, when you're felling trees. But Clegg's history here at SOE on streams and stuff, feeling he'll be crushing himself with many a tree. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna chop a tree down, it's just gonna fall right on me. Like, I'm gonna chop yeah. it the wrong way, and it's just gonna land on me. Yeah, I'll be yeah I mean, probably the first time it falls on on SMED, we'll, we'll probably take it out. <laughs> <laughs> always away from we'll the Slayer, always. <laughs> we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> nice, well, right, thanks thank very you much, so much. Sure. I do one of the last thing about the tree falling stuff I do want to point out is that makes a lot of noise. I don't know what the last tree you chopped down was, but be careful. Wait, Jimmy, I see something. Something what? that we can't, forgot about. Chris! We forgot about the first person we started Wait, with. Is something working? Do you have it's a vehicle? Working. It's all working. I think I see a vehicle. It's great. Hello again. Um, so one of the things I'm working on right now is we've recently put a, like a acceleration turbo boost kind of on the shift key when you're driving the her, um, the off-roader around, and one of the things that we had from Planet Side that I'm working on getting working for us is in-air control. So when you go off a ramp, you have attitude um, adjustment and stuff so you can sort of correct. And um, what we're looking at right here is one of our test zones. Um, it's a big, wide-open space <laughs> near the origin of the level. We have these ramps and stuff that are um, good for testing stuff, um, but the rest of the zone is just a completely flat surface which is great for profiling uh, speed and acceleration and that sort of thing. Um, one of the uh, overlays that we can get is a whole bunch of textual information that gives me frame-by-frame um, -frame information about what the simulation is doing, what the inputs are doing, um, that sort of thing. So in this specific case where I'm working on the in-air controls, uh, once it gets airborne, uh, we have thruster information, and I can see specifically um, how much is getting applied um, nice. on each axis and stuff, and switching back over to our design tool, um, 
basically when it's in the air, I have yaw pitch and roll con uh, control, and I can adjust the thrusters and set that sort of thing up. Um, and then iterate back and forth and try and get it so it feels good. It uh, gives you the ability to correct um, when you're not you know, going to land flat. Um, but also trying to balance it so it's not just wacky and, and yeah, that's and cool. So you're trying to make it feel like not arcadey, you know, but it actually feels good. It, right. That's and hard to do too because you because what it should do is it should just go head over and just land into the ground and explode. Right. But well, you know you can't have it be too realistic. Otherwise, no one will ever be able to drive any of these things. Yeah. And if you watch people when they're playing, a lot of the time, even before we hooked this up. Um, players try and use English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they move the camera, they move their head, you know, and stuff like that. Um, and so we're sort of just piggybacking on stuff that people tend to do naturally. Um, and if it's a subtle effect, um, you know, it could be really good. That's um, cool. So one of the other things, um, recently uh, we had some uh, new weapon types and stuff put in. Um, so basically I'm going through and making sure that for everything that the player can have equipped, um, as far as their, uh, their weapons and stuff, but when they go and they cost the, the vehicle, it does the proper amount of damage or not, uh, depending on the, on the vehicle type. Um, and there's a cool, there's lots of cool um, debug commands, but one of the things that helps a lot for this is debug damage. Um, once you enter that command, anything that you do um, to the vehicle shows output about how much the raw damage was, how much gets filtered out, and we have fairly fine-grained control over what we call resist information uh, filters that go through and make it so that if you shoot a thing, it takes a certain percentage off. If it goes over a threshold, it's you know a slightly complicated um, formula, but we can work it out. So the worst case is every time something gets introduced to this brand new uh -huh. and there's no filter at all, um, you know, you'll walk up to the off-roader and you'll hit it with a flare and it caught, suddenly explodes because it it's 100 percent <laughs> of the damage. Nice. Um, so every time we put new stuff in, you know, part of my role is to go through and make sure that everything's, you know, we're covering all our bases. Awesome. Stuff, so. Well, we'll leave you alone. Thanks for showing us the vehicle. No problem. And uh, what you do. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if there's anything over here to see. I, mean, it's, it's almost we, play I think we went. Oh, it's play test time. It's almost Five there. Minutes. It's almost play test time. What? How long? Five minutes. Five minutes to play test time. So. Uh, Let's uh let's go mm -hmm. back to uh yes. command center. Over here, here. Clay, I'll be right back. All right. Keep going over there. Thanks, Jimmy. Leave me on a. Leave me on a. <laughs> yeah, I would like it in. Do what time?